You wouldn't know it at a glance, but the ocean is teeming with minuscule and microscopic life. You see, most critters in the ocean spend at least part of their lives here, floating as plankton. And what drives them to survive is the need to pass on their genes to the next generation. But making babies can get very complicated in the world of plankton. Complicated and bizarre. There are no online dating apps for diatoms. So these phytoplankton swipe left on all mates. And instead, they reproduce by making copies of themselves. But cloning brings its own set of problems. This kind of diatom looks like a perfect circle from above. But from the side, you can tell that it's centric. Two interlocking plates that nest one inside the other. To reproduce, the two plates detach, and each makes a new matching plate, which creates a problem. The original, smaller plate has to clone an even tinier plate to interlock with. Eventually, if they only clone themselves smaller and smaller, the diatom would shrink into infinity. So to prevent diatoms from entering the quantum realm, sexual reproduction kicks in. With the added genetic material from a mate, the diatom creates a special version of itself, called an oxospore, to recover its size before starting the shrink-as-you-clone process all over again. But what if where you need to reproduce is far away from where you live, too far away for you to swim? Such is life for some plankton parasites, like this bopyrid isopod. To get to their love palace, the isopods hitch a ride on a different kind of zooplankton, called a copepod, and only detach when they're close to their final crustacean destination. To reproduce, it needs to burrow into mud shrimp that live in faraway mud flats. Once a mud shrimp host is detected nearby, the isopod jumps off the copepod and burrows into the shrimp. If it's the first one to arrive, the isopod becomes a female while all the late arrivals become much smaller males. And then they get busy making babies with a fresh supply of mud shrimp blood to power their procreation. Most plankton don't live very long, days, maybe weeks, and being a parent is a big investment. So extended parental care is rare in the plankton world. Plus, can you imagine trying to keep track and care for thousands of babies? About as nurturing as plankton get is hanging on to their eggs until they hatch and watching them as they drift away. But while parents don't have control over where their babies go after hatching, when they hatch is something they can influence. To give their babies the best chance at survival, some creatures carefully time their reproduction for when food will be most abundant. And that tends to happen in cycles. First, phytoplankton bloom when ample sunshine for photosynthesis and the right nutrients line up. The phytoplankton bloom then triggers the birth of grazers who feast on the phytoplankton. And then the predators hatch, and the predators predators, and so on in a boom and bust cycle. And because most plankton can make babies by the thousands, some will survive the cycle to continue passing on the family genes. There's no sugarcoating it. Making babies in the plankton world can be tough. But somehow, these miniature wonders find a way to make it work. <laughs>